Buenos dias! In the previous video, we saw the basic mechanics of using logical masks. In this video, we'll examine a couple example situations where a mask helps us accomplish a programming goal efficiently. In this code, we implement the basic physics equation that models the height of a ball thrown in the air without air resistance. It is no difficult task to define parameters, create a time vector, compute height for each time value, and then make a plot. But what do you notice is strange about this plot? The height of the ball goes negative, and very much so. Assuming that the ground is at height zero, then we know we should cut off the data in the plot once the height reaches zero. How can we do this? One approach is to run the numbers by hand first and identify the time when the ball bounces, but why not let MATLAB do the hard work for us? This first method uses the find command. Here we ask MATLAB to scan through the height vector and return just the first index where h goes negative. We then use that index to extract a shorter vector for both time and height. The original h vector is shown here with a length of 21. The trimmed h1 vector now only has 12 values and the very last value is the first case where the height drops negative. But why doesn't it stop at zero exactly? Remember that these are discrete computations. For the arbitrary time values that we passed in, we are not guaranteed specific height output values. So the best we can do is get close to cutting off the data at the right place. Once we plot h1 versus t1, we will have our desired result of a plot that stops near height equals zero. Note that this approach only works for certain situations where the data is not oscillating. For our model equation, once height drops below zero, we know it is never coming back, so we can safely cut off all following indices. A more flexible approach is to use the logical mask. Here, my mask is named pause ends and holds true values at indices where height is above zero. Then, I use the mask to extract the corresponding values from the original time and height vectors. It's obvious why I extract only the positive h values, but why t? Because in order to make a plot, the two input vectors must be the same length. This method assures that we have a consistent set of ordered pairs to plot. And here is what that final plot looks like. There is one small difference between the results of this logical mask method and the find method on the previous slide. I'll leave it to you to find it. Our next example is to try to write efficient code to accomplish this new goal. First, matrix A will be created to look like the table shown here. Then, for all the smaller numbers, five or less, we will square the numbers. And for all the larger numbers, we will take the square root. This will produce this final table. The goals convert nicely into an if-else branch within a nested for loop. For every index in the matrix, if the value is large, then take the square root of that value. Else, if the number is small, square that value. But a nested for loop requires a great deal of repetition in order to evaluate each index individually. We can make the code more efficient to type and run through the use of a logical mask as shown here. First, a mask named B is created which holds true values for all the large numbers. Then, at indices where we have a large number, reassign those values to be square roots of the current values. Then, at indices where we do not have a large number, reassign those values to be squares of the current value. Again, we see the concept that we have encountered frequently as of late. In programming, there are many ways to accomplish a goal, but some are more elegant than others. The more tools you have in your tool belt, and logical masks are a powerful tool, then the more effective you can be in solving problems.